Ditsy Rascal. Hey guys, Culture here. After telling the story of my mating with Faith and the subsequent good feels that followed, I was surprised to see that you actually enjoyed it. I was almost 100% certain that you were all maniacal sadists that loved seeing me fail. But to my surprise and everyone else's, you're not. Some of you actually still enjoy indulging in a nice slice of life every now and then. Now, of course, if you eat too many of these sweet slices of life, you'll end up fat with warm fuzzies. But a little taste every now and then can't do too much harm. And that's what I present to you today. Another heartwarming story about a date that went, dare I say it? Well, I call this story, Ditsy Rascal. At a friend's party, I was given the great pleasure of meeting a girl we'll call Rascal. And yes, I'm going to pronounce it Rascal, not Rascal, so you'll just have to get used to that. Rascal was a total babe, a complete hottie with a look that made you fidget on the spot with embarrassment. I was intimidated, sure, and struggling to get my bearings back. I could only assume this was what people meant when they talked about breathtaking beauty. Luckily, my trance was broken when Rascal tripped over a stool leg while walking over to our group. It's hard to put someone clumsy on such a high pedestal. In fact, clumsy people and high pedestals should never be in the same room together, especially if the high pedestal has a priceless Ming vase on it. I was soon to learn that Rascal was one such person. Maybe she was a little unco or just lacked awareness, but the net effect was she struggled to string together a series of graceful movements. Her thoughts were just as clumsy. Let's just say she wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, a few cards short of a full deck, a few beers short of a six pack, a few sandwiches short of a picnic, the elevator didn't go all the way to the top floor, the light was on but nobody was home, and it was fair to say that somewhere a village was missing its idiot. Feel free to pick whichever saying you like best. The point is, she was dumb, really dumb. She didn't know pop culture, she didn't know science, she didn't know politics, she didn't know music, she didn't know history, and I'm fairly certain that she didn't really know English. I'm fairly certain she was just parroting back the sounds that were thrown at her while laughing and flipping the hair out of her eyes. It was as though somehow she had managed to actually block out the intake of information even on a passive level. I'd be lying if I didn't say it was kind of impressive. And the worst part of all of this? I really enjoyed chatting to her. And no, not just because she was attractive. It was because despite being dumb as a doornail, she was nice and considerate and funny and complimentary. She had no pride, no reason to override the conversation or try to control. In fairness, that's probably because if she did take control of the conversation, she would promptly steer it off a bridge and into a river. But the point was, she knew well enough not to do that, which is more than I can say for most people, including myself at times. It was endearing. Deeply so, and I wanted to talk more with her. The one thing Rascal did seem to know about was fashion. Now keep in mind, I'm an imbecile when it comes to fashion. If you blindfolded a monkey, chucked it in a wardrobe, and picked out the first five items of clothing it threw its scat on, you would most likely have assembled a better outfit than whatever I would have chosen. However, despite this, I still got the impression from talking to Rascal that she really did know what she was on about. And not only did she know her stuff, but she was passionate about it too. I couldn't have cared less about fashion, but listening to her talk about it, my interest was definitely piqued. When I asked her about my choices, she stated in the nicest and yet most direct way possible what was wrong with it, and made some suggestions. Most of her ideas were a little too bold for my taste, but she catered to that and came up with toned down ideas. Her recommendations came custom fitted. We both agreed I needed new clothes, so I took it as an opportunity. I asked if she wanted to go shopping with me sometime. Rascal said yes. I was chuffed and probably spent the rest of the night with a stupid grin plastered on my face. A week or so later, we met up at H&M. Not exactly haute couture, I know, but I had to keep it in my comfort zone. It was inevitable that I would find myself pushed to discomfort by the constant modeling of outfits, but I was hoping to minimize that as much as possible by giving myself some degree of familiarity in the situation. As they say, keep it simple, stupid. And speaking of stupid, rascal. I'm not trying to be mean, but well, let me just give you an example. We were talking about what we studied at uni. I told Rascal I study chemistry, majoring in pharmacology. Her eyes lit up and she said with an inflection of hope in her voice, oh my God, I love farms. I went to a petting zoo on a farm once that had teacup pigs that were so adorable. It took my mind a couple of moments to connect the conversational dots. Oh, right, farm ecology. Good lord. I told her I meant pharmacology, like the design of drugs and their effects on the body. To which she replied, Oh, sorry to hear. My cousin was addicted for a long time, but he's been sober for a whole year now. Once again, I facepalmed internally. From anyone else, I would have assumed that this was a joke, but by the sincere look of concern in her eyes, I could tell she meant it. No, 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 I don't do drugs. I just study them. Oh, oh, thank god. I just didn't want to judge or anything because, well, anyway. She embarrassedly attempted to change the topic, looking down as she blushed. I couldn't help but smile. 
We looked through the racks, picking out some shirts, pants, jumpers, and Rascal kept me encouraged by not entirely throwing up all over my opinions. If you can imagine my opinions as seedlings, Rascal simply chose to tend to the most hopeful of these seeds, cultivating them, allowing them to blossom into full-blown concepts with her gentle attention. I'm not an outgoing guy by nature, so attempting to show off clothes to Rascal was weird for me. But she kept the atmosphere alive, made me feel more open to flaunting my stuff. Even saying the word flaunting right now is mildly embarrassing, but with her accepting supervision, it really did make the whole thing fun. And then it was back to talking, this time over lunch at the food court. I listened to Rascal tell me about her family. She has three sisters and I have three brothers, which is neat. And her uni. She did a Bachelor of Arts, which she said she was doing all right at. P's get degrees, I suppose. I liked her, but the fleeting hypothetical notion of doing a group project with her twisted my brain up in preemptive frustration. But those troubled ideas melted away when I looked back at her smiling so warmly. I was entranced by her. I didn't care if the words coming out of her mouth were senseless or vapid. I just enjoyed the rhythm of it. I broke out of my reverie to Rascal saying something like, if you plug a PowerPoint into another PowerPoint, what happens? Which at the time seemed like a really dumb thing to say, but now that I'm saying it, yeah, it's a fair question. What does happen if you plug a PowerPoint into another PowerPoint? Someone, please tell me. We then moved on to Rascal's shopping. If I was uncomfortable before, this new feeling was one of pure anxiety and paranoia. Rascal seemed to have no qualms about walking through the women's underwear section with me, pointing out what she liked and didn't like about particular undergarments. I mean, come on, listen to me. I can't even bring myself to say the word bras. Oh. I just did. If I didn't know any better, I'd say Rascal was doing it just to make me squirm, but she didn't have a mean bone in her body. She just genuinely thought I'd be interested in the minutiae of women's fashion. Her thoughts were uncompromised, completely free of corruption by any sense of wrongdoing. She just wanted us to enjoy ourselves, to have fun. It was pure, unadulterated desire to share an experience. And I fully appreciated that, even if I had little interest in what an epaulette was. We followed this up with a movie, Spectre, the James Bond film. I'm not sure if any of you have seen the film, but the plot isn't that complicated. Besides, even if you're not following the plot, you can at least lean back and enjoy the set pieces. Like that opening sequence at the Dia de los Muertos. Sure, there's espionage and you don't quite know what's happening at first, but mainly it's all about the pretty colors and big decorations. But when I glanced over at Rascal's face, she looked so desperately confused by the whole thing. So hopelessly lost, like an innocent little deer. I watched her face become more contorted in bafflement as the scenes unfolded, growing increasingly worried when the action-heavy set pieces came on. Maybe she just didn't like violence. It would make sense that her kind heart couldn't stand seeing someone in pain, even if it was just some no-name crony. It was fair to guess even without asking that Spectre was not Rascal's favourite film. It's probably Peter Pan or something, though even that's got a guy with a hook for a hand, which might be a little bit too extreme a fantasy for Rascal's precious mind. Sesame Street might be more up her alley. I tried to chat about the film afterwards, but Rascal seemed to want to move on fairly quickly from that topic. I felt bad, so I thought we should do something that she wanted to do to cheer her up. I asked her if she wanted to go to this place down by the Yarra River a little cafe area. Once she saw the fairy lights and the reflection of the city skyline in the water, she perked right back up. The time passed by quickly, and I got lost in how Rascal daydreamed about her future, what she wanted to do, about her dogs and her work, and it all just seemed so... quaint. It was nice, really. I don't have a sarcastic or scathing remark to add here, it really was just... nice. It was getting late and I had to go. We left the outdoor cafe and walked back up to the train station. I had to leave her at the Mikey gate, so I waved goodbye, not quite sure how far to push it. Rascal laughed and hugged me tightly, then pulled back and looked up at me. It was that same look that always made me fidget with embarrassment. She held there, longer. I kissed her, just a peck, and she seemed over the moon. At least I knew I was. She smiled and said bye, bouncing off down the path. I have a habit of overthinking things, and Rascal didn't seem to think things through at all. Somehow, that made the thoughts even on belts. And it kind of worked, but it wasn't being a complete airhead that made Rascal attractive to me. It was how humble she was. She didn't know everything, but she wanted to. She didn't understand everything, but she tried. And what she did know, she knew how to know it, if that makes sense. She didn't rub it in your face or drown you out with it. I think I learned a lot from that. Well, I mean, apparently not that much. I still feel the need to blabber onto you guys about every little thing I know. But it could be much, much worse. Trust me. See you all soon. If you enjoy what we do here at Culture Crash, please consider supporting the show via our Patreon, where we have a bunch of awesome rewards, or by checking out our online store. All links are in the description below.